Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Writer here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. Many of you, I'm sure, will be wondering what um, is meant by the thumbnail name, so the James Webb Telescope Earwax Removal. And do continue to watch because um, you'll see exactly what I mean. Now, some of you may be aware that today there were some amazing images released from, from the first five pictures taken from the James Webb um, telescope of the cosmos and the improvements it was over its predecessor, the Hubble telescope. And similarly in this procedure, once I removed this, uh, this is the patient's left ear, once I removed this occluding earwax, it was quite stubborn as well, the patient um, had been really suffering with their hearing. We're going to take a peek into the patient's middle ear and it's quite amazing. It's probably one of the best optics I've managed to obtain and visuals with the eye clear scope. We are literally going to be looking into the middle ear space, um, hence the name. <laughs> so um, essentially with this patient, they've had a long-standing eustachian tube dysfunction. So I'm just going to give you a bit of a background whilst you're watching this. Um, so it, it kind of all makes sense and comes together when you see the middle ear. So this patient has long-standing eustachian tube dysfunction. Now the eustachian tube is a narrow orifice, a little connective tube that connects the middle ear, so the space behind the eardr eardrum, the cavity behind the eardrum, to the back of the nose. And it serves two purposes essentially. It's the pressure equalizer in the ear, because we want the air pressure behind the eardrum to be the same as the air pressure in the atmosphere. And when the air pressure is equal either side to the eardrum, that's when the eardrum is at its most mobile, and that's when we can therefore hear the best. In addition, the eustachian tube, you can think about it a bit like a drain pipe. So any fluid that is secreted behind the eardrum, it can trickle out the eustachian tube to the back of the nose, to the back of the throat. So there's no fluid behind the eardrum. Now, the eustachian tube is normally closed, uh, but during the course of the day, during brief moments of yawning, swallowing, chewing, the eustachian tube, where it connects to the back of the nose, the muscles contract and it temporarily, momentarily opens and fluid can drain and air can enter or exit depending upon what is required to equalise the air pressure. However, sometimes that eustachian tube gets blocked at the back of the nose and most co the most common reason is nasal congestion, so people have a uh, head cold, nasal congestion, flu, blocks the back of the nose, the eustachian tube gets clogged up, can't open. Other potential reasons are some people are just born anatomically with a narrow eustachian tube. Um, in addition, uh, the muscles that contract, that open the eustachian tube, and some people can weaken over the years. Now, what happens when the eustachian tube becomes blocked and it can't equalise the air, air pressure? So the remaining air that's in the middle ear cavity, it gets sucked up, it gets absorbed by all the cells in the middle ear. That then creates a vacuum because there's no more air left behind the eardrum. And when there's a vacuum, um, in the middle ear, the eardrum gets sucked in. Now, it typically gets sucked in at the top part of the eardrum, the region we call the attic or the pars placida, and that's because that part of the eardrum is a bit weaker than the rest. The main body of the eardrum is a bit stronger than the top part, but sometimes other parts of the eardrum can get sucked in, and in this case, you'll see it in a moment, the back part of the eardrum, what we call the posterior quadrant, and I'm going to annotate it in a minute, that's got sucked in. That's not a hole, guys. That looks like a perforation, but it's not a perforation. It's actually, the eardrum is intact, but it's sucked in, and it's, it's quite a severe uh, retraction. And it's sucked in so much, the eardrum, that it's wrapped itself. Now, think about the eardrum like a piece of cling film. It's sucked in so much that the cling film is wrapped around the middle ear structures and um, even the pomultry of the cochlea. Um, so that's more for the audiologist. They'll be able to understand what the, the pomultry is. But we've got three bones in the middle ear. We've got the hammer bone, we've got, uh, also known as the malleus, we've got the anvil, which is also known as the incus, which is the, the second of the three bones. And then we've got the smallest bone in the body called the stapes bone. And in this case, we can actually see th all three bones. We can see the hammer bone, which we can normally see uh, in, when we examine people, which we should be normally able to see when we examine people's ears. We can see the incus of the second bone. We can that comes in two parts. We can see what we call the long process, and we can actually see the head of the stapes. So that circle there, that's not a hole. Um, that's a retraction. The eardrum sucked into the middle ear. And in a minute, I'm going to annotate some of the structures of the middle ear. So to the top right, we've got the stapedius tendon. So the, and then to the left, we've got what we call the incostapedal joint. So the incostapedal joint is where the incus meets the stapes, the smallest bone in the body. Then you've got the muscle, the tendon that connects to that. 
And to the bottom right, if you need to rewind it, we've got what we call the round window niche. And it's very rare that you can see that um, through uh, an otoscope or an endoscope if the eardrum is intact. So it was just a stunning view of the middle ear. Uh, we're looking into the middle ear space, hence why I had a bit of fun with the, the, the title of the video. Hope no one minds. Um, we're now going to um, show you the same patient's right ear. So again, uh, a lot of wax, keratin, still quite stubborn. Now, this eardrum is also retracted, but it's nowhere near as retracted as their left ear. It's just the attic region that's retracted. And you'll see that in a minute. So again, they've got a blocked eustachian tube. It's a long-standing issue for this patient. They actually had a grommet in this ear, and you'll see um, to the front part of the eardrum, once we remove this wax, um, the, there's some scar tissue there, and that can sometimes develop when a patient's had a grommet. So the grommet is a ventilation tube, which allows air to enter the middle ear space via the ear canal as opposed to uh, via the eustachian tube. So it's very common in children because children are more likely to get con nasal congestion and children's eustachian tubes are a lot narrower so, and a lot, the, the, the position of the eustachian tube is a bit more horizontal than it is vertical. As we age, the eustachian tube widens and it becomes more vertical. So gravity plays a hand and it helps the fluid drain out of the middle ear. Um, so children, um, uh, typically from glue ear, that's the condition. And to prevent fluid buildup, because it can be a chronic problem for children to ligger out of it, some children never do, and it, it, they still continue to suffer from blocked eustachian tubes and fluid glue ear uh, in their adult, adulthood. But a grommet is inserted because typically the children do grow out of it, and it's a short term measure to allow air to enter the middle ear space. And, and also any fluid that may secrete in the middle ear to drain out. And as you can see here, we're at a stalemate with this. I've got a suction grip. Uh, the patient had been poking inside the ear as well, a cotton bird, you probably see this. Where I am now is actually the indentation. And I don't want to lose this suction grip. I've got a really, really good suction grip. If I move away too quickly with the sucker now, I'm going to lose that grip. Uh, if I push too, too any further into the wax, I'm going to push it back in. I've just got that equilibrium. Um, and when I've got, so it's kind of almost like a state of inertia at the moment with the sucker and the wax. Don't want to let go. You can see it's slightly, did, I've, it has become loose a couple of times, but I'm just going to go back in and get that suction grip. But we're just going to wriggle this out, and you can already see the eardrum and the bottom and the distance. And we're nearly there. Uh, so, guys, if you haven't already, um, please do feel free to tune into my other YouTube channel, Clearwax. Just the link will be in the description, but you can also just type in Clearwax. On the Clearwax channel, I'm promoting more of the wax scope videos, um, and um, I've had some got some great videos going up there. Um, I might, depending upon time, I might quickly upload another really interesting video today uh, of some middle ear fluid that I suctioned. That, but the middle ear fluid. So when you got glue in, which we've just been explaining. Uh, this fluid had kind of pushed through the eardrum and there was, must have been a tiny hole in the eardrum somewhere and it pushed through and the eardrum has since healed up but there was some middle ear fluid that is suctioned off my client's ear today, um, but in the ear canal. So there's the attic region I'm focusing on at the top. You can see the scar tissue to the right. We're just going to mop up some dead skin laterally on the anterior canal wall and also in a minute on the posterior canal wall. So we're, because we're near the entrance, we call that lateral aspect. And you're going to see a still image of the debris that I removed. So that's all the wax and keratin from both ears. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Keep well, take care, and remember to be nice and be kind. Bye.